Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 5. Also, we're going to be mainly actually talking about Chris in this video. So, it's a bit about stuff that's not to do with Supergirl, a bit about him going through this interview, but it's also linked to Supergirl as well. Also, we're going to be talking about the Supergirl Season 4 gag reel, because that was released. So, if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new. So you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so first things first, let's talk about the gag reel. Like we get on most years, you know, we didn't get one for, I believe it was season two. We get gag reels every year. So we got a gag reel last year and they're always really fun because it's all the mess ups and all the sort of quirky, goofy moments of the cast behind the scenes when they mess up or, you know, when they just break into dancing or something like that. So we got the official gag reel it's about seven minutes. I'll leave a link in the description below. I'm not sure if it's all of it, but I'm pretty sure it is. However, you guys can see it on the DVD when it comes out. It's coming out in, I think it's like five days in the UK. I'm not sure if it's out in America already. But also the Flash DVD is coming out. So if you guys want them, please be sure to enter today's giveaway because I'm going to be doing a giveaway for the Flash or Supergirl on DVD. The new season's so all you need to do is leave a like and a comment and comment why you want to get it. Also subscribe and share the channel around on social media. So that's all you got to do. And if you're sharing it, tag me at the DC TV show so I know. Okay, so the gag reel basically contains, you know, the usual dancing with Melissa, David and Katie and, you know, Kyla and everyone basically. But, you know, specifically Melissa. But it seems to be a lot of David dancing this year. I really had a lot of fun watching them dance around because, you know, that is what they are known for. And we got that recently with the flash gag reel, and I was surprised how much dancing that was happening with other people apart from Grant, because Grant normally dances when he fails. You know, it's kind of funny. But then, you know, David, like, he's hella dancing. He's dancing like mad in this gag reel. And so you get other stuff like Melissa's stomach crumbling and them just doing, like, big fail takes where you know messing up words and so on and so forth and one of my favorite ones was actually when david's there kyla and melissa they're outside that house where eve's aunt i believe she lived and it's the scene where she's walking out and those two are walking next to her and kyla says i might not have to work out any longer she's talking about what was happening with her in the episode but it's just Melissa's reaction. It was absolutely hilarious. It's kind of easier to watch it and you'll find it funny. And, like, the swearing as per usual, because, you know, they barely ever swear on the TV show. They may drop, like, a that's bullshit once in a while. But, you know, they don't really swear that much in the TV show because, you know, it's not their audience. And so seeing them swear, like, between takes when they mess up with, like, one of the ones that everyone's been going crazy about is Kyla saying, fuck you, Katie because she messes up and scares her. So I really like that. That's one of my favorite bits in the gag reel. Also, lots of hair fails with Melissa because you know, you know she's got super freaking long hair and they've got like wind machines or whatever they're using and you know, it's really funny. And so like walking into the camera and you know, more dancing basically. So that is all I wanted to talk about. So you guys can check out the gag reel. I really love it. Let's move on to the next thing, talking about Chris Wood's interview with Geo Journal. And this interview is his first interview, I believe, since Supergirl, actually. It's been a long time. And so this is very exciting that he is finally coming back to acting. He has revealed. But I'm going to read the whole bit to do with Chris. There was a photo shoot as well, so those photos will be on the screen. But this is how it goes. Actor Chris Wood's on-screen time has ranged from PBS's period drama Mercy Street to HBO's Emmy award-winning series Girls to the CW's Containment and the Vampire Diaries. Fans of Supergirl also on the CW recognize him as mon -El, who had a twisty-turny relationship with the titular heroine played by Melissa Benoist, Wood's real-life fiancé, now actual wife. After closing out Supergirl's third season, the 31-year-old actor, who studied musical theatre in North Carolina before moving westward, took some time to pursue other interests, including writing and directing a short film, The Stew. Cheering on his beloved Yankees and founding a mental health awareness non-profit that 
in only two years has donated $350 million from the sale of branded merch to mental health organization. So this is the interview bit. So this is what they ask him. What have you been working on since leaving Supergirl? Since leaving Supergirl, I've devoted all my time to writing and working on my nonprofit, I Don't Mind. I needed a break from acting and I'm excited to get back in the saddle now that I've taken some time off. I'm really working to keep myself in a selective mindset so I don't end up feeling stuck again. I'm in development on a feature I wrote which is incredibly exciting, but I'm not able to talk about it yet and have been writing other projects. Okay, so this is the specific paragraph that I really wanted to talk about. So he talks about since leaving Supergirl, he's been working on I Don't Mind, which I fully support and you guys should support as well. And you can get some amazing t-shirts for a good cause. Also, he talks about how he needed a break from acting and he's getting back into the saddle. So. Does this mean that he may return to Supergirl? When I first read this, I read that as a sign that there is definitely hope that he can return to Supergirl, considering that, you know, he's going to be around Melissa a lot, considering they are now husband and wife, congrats to them, and I would say with him returning to acting, I think if they want, I think the show wants him back, but if he wants to do it, he can most certainly return. And this is a great sign for us mon fans because I do believe that if everything turns out good and he wants to come back, I think he will come back. Maybe more likely than not for the 100th episode and maybe Crisis. I'm not sure. But that's a lot of optimism coming out of this because, you know, I think this is a good sign. So then he talks about how... He's in development on a feature he wrote, so he's been writing a lot, he's been writing screenplays and The Stew, his short film, has had a really good reception at lots of short film festivals. There was one in Vancouver, there was a Holly Shorts one in Los Angeles, and they keep on getting really good reception. So he's doing a good thing and he is, you know, pursuing other paths, but now he's returning to acting. There is a chance that he may return to Supergirl, and I'm really looking forward to having a look at what his future project will be. Okay, so let's move on to the next part of the interview. Why did you want to make your short film The Stew? So The Stew came about in a moment of trying to take that creative power back. I had to do something that felt good to make and give myself permission to take risks and to tell stories the way I want to tell them. Regardless of what other people thought, I made something really quirky and unique, which I'm proud of in spite of any flaws. So, The Stew, like I said, has had really great reception. I'm really hoping that it's released online or shown anywhere in England, because I really want to see it. It looks really good, and I love the sort of quirky aspect that he's going for, the, you know, quirky comedic aspect with Melissa and Carlos playing the main characters. I think there is a lot there that is right up my alley and I really hope that he releases it. So if Chris, if you're watching this, release it online or send it to me. Okay, so next question. Does being an actor influence your writing and directing? I grew up writing and making short films and by college my focus had almost entirely shifted to acting. Not consciously, it's just what happened. I never stopped writing, but I was really only doing it for myself. As an actor, I have been very fortunate to have had so many opportunities and I had been working more or less non-stop for a f solid few years, but I wasn't getting the same rush out of acting that I used to. And I needed to write and create content that was only growing stronger. So next question, why is mental health so important to you? A while back, I had an impossibly tough year that left me juggling grief and depression. My coping mechanism was to shut it down and not talk about it. When people would ask how I was, I just ended the conversation and said I was fine. For a couple of years, that was how I operated, and it was terrible. I didn't really start to heal until the first time I decided to actually be honest about what I was feeling and what I had been through. Instead of shutting people down, when they asked how I was, I heard myself starting to respond with, oh, I don't mind, I can talk about it. But just that tiny switch in my response to people changed everything. I hadn't been admitting there was a problem, so how could I get help? Only when I admitted that I wasn't okay could I even start looking 
multiple ways to get better. So, as you know, Chris is a massive supporter of mental health because, you know, he's been through these struggles. Same with Melissa, same with lots of people out there. Obviously, actors go through the same things that normal people do. So, you know, I love what he's doing with his organization and how he's spreading that awareness and he's using his power and sort of his status to actually propel that and it's a really great thing okay so now moving on to the next question why did you start your own organization i don't mind fast forward a few years into my healing i was starting to work with mental health organizations so i could give back and i just kept thinking every approach i'm seeing caters to the insiders to, pe to people who already know mental health is a problem and needs attention it occurred to me that maybe we needed to try something different in order to reach more people if it's true that one in four people in the world will experience mental illness in their life, then we've all been close to someone who has suffered. And that means we can all relate and we should all be able to talk about it. So I founded I Don't Owned in 2017. It's a mental health awareness campaign working to defeat stigma by inspiring conversations. The idea is that we talk more about mental health. The more we normalize it so we do everything in our power to get people talking just moving on from that because this links into that paragraph how is your organization different from other non-profits focus on mental health chris says i landed on this idea that people talk about what they're wearing and how they are feeling and i thought oh i can just try and use that as an asset it has everything to do with style and message too much and it's in your face and people will feel too scared of it, too little, and it lacks a punch of meaning. So we chose a name that makes you ask what it means, which starts a conversation. We chose a style of t-shirt, sweatshirt, cap, and other items embolized with I don't mind that's minimal and can easily fit into your everyday wardrobe. It's not clearly about mental health. We want to appeal to people's curiosity. We hope to make it interesting for people to buy, wear, share, talk about post about and generate a dialogue so that was chris's interview a lot to do with i don't mind a lot to do with why he took a break and why he's coming back a lot to do with the stew as well and some of his upcoming stuff lots of interesting stuff i highly recommend you read the article after this i'll leave it in the description below so i really love chris and what he does especially i don't mind and i really hope that he comes back for supergirl so Thank you guys so much for watching, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, subscribe and turn on notifications as we try and reach 100,000 subscribers. I'll catch you guys later, goodbye. I see red.